Hello everyone, my name is Ajay. Uh, in this video, I will be explaining about Code First Approach in Entity Framework. So, Code First Approach is nothing but uh, we can create the tables in the database by using the custom classes and the properties in those custom classes uh, from the code directly. I mean, instead of creating the tables using the SQL Server Management Studio, you can directly create from the code. So, for that, uh, I would like to explain this in detail by using example. So for that, let me create a new project, console application, or let me name as sample code first, okay. Okay, so here's uh, my project is ready. So I have a program.js file over here. Okay, now uh, for approaching entity code first, you have to add a new item called ADO dot IDO entity model. So for adding that item, go to data and go to add this one ADO.NET entity data model. So just I want to name as employee context. Okay. So just I'm adding this ADO.NET entity data model to my project. So here it will be asking uh, for here you can see there are four options. So if you select this option over here, uh, you, you usually use this option if you already have a tables in the database and just if you want to make operations for those, ta for those tables, you have to use this option. But in this video, I'm explaining about code first approach. So you have to select empty code first model. So where you can create the tables and everything from the code itself. So let me select this option over here and click on finish. Okay, so here if you see in the references, I got two references added uh, to the references folder and also if you see, I got a new employeecontext.cs file added. So this is the file, so I just want to delete these comments from here. Okay, so if you see in this class, it is inheriting from the db context class and in this class, I'm having a constructor. Uh, called employee context. Uh, this is a constructor of this class and it is also inheriting the base class constructor. So here in this I have to give the connection connection string name. So this connection string usually uh, I mean you can directly add this connection string in app.config file. So let me add a new connection string. So for adding a new connection string or, uh, or else I can also rename this one. So in this connection strings you can add in as many as as many connection strings that you want. So for now, I just I will just edit this connection string as per my requirements. If you go to this code. So if you see my server name is AJ slash SQL Server exp, SQL Express. So just rename the data source as my uh, server name. Okay, and the initial catalog is nothing but the database that you want to select in your server. So I want to use this employee DB. So I will be giving the name of employee DB over here. So just give the name of your database that you want to select uh, in the server initially. Employee DB and this uh, integrated security is nothing but for making the Windows authentication possible. Uh, you have to keep us through the integration security, integrated security, and then uh, uh, leave it as a default uh, for the uh, leave it as default uh, for the other options. Okay, just I made a small modifications to this connection string. Just name them. Uh, just given the name of my server, the data source, and I uh, I give I've given the database name of of my I given the database name here uh, for in the initial uh, in the initial for the initial catalog. So my name of the connection string is employee context connection string. So the name of this connection string is employee context connection string. So let me copy that and. So you have, here you have to give the name of the connection string that you want to connect to the database. 
okay so everything is good till here so in this database in this database if you see tables there are no tables actually so in this database i want to add a table called employee uh, which just consists the basic details of the employees so for that first i have to create a custom class let me name it as employee okay and so to this class uh, i mean for the table i want to have two columns uh, employee id and employee name so for this custom class i have to add two properties so the first one is employee id and i'm setting the properties is integer type and the second property is of type string and it is employee name okay so i'm done with adding two properties to this class so for this properties actually in the uh, so this properties are nothing but uh, you can assume as the column names so first one is employee id and the second one is employee name so I want to make this employee ID as a primary key. So for that, for making that as a primary key, you just need to add an attribute called key. So usually in this namespace, you can find that attribute. See so data annotations, system dot component model dot data annotations. So by using this data annotation. I can make this property as a primary key and also I want to make this as a required field I mean doesn't accept null values like that okay so for this property I made uh, it as a primary key and I made it as not null by using the require one okay for this second property employee name I want to make it as required field why because it doesn't I don't want to allow null values to this uh, column in the table okay okay so I'm done with add, uh, I'm done with creating a custom class called employee and to that class I added two properties so when I start uh, when I start creating a object to this employee context then it will automatically create the table in the Server. So I'll be showing that. So before the in the employee context, which is inheriting from the DB context, you have to create a property. Uh, property. I'm, I'll be naming it as employees. This is a DB set actually. Uh, it will be consisting of uh, all the table rows and all the table uh, data in this property actually. So this type must be the type of this employee this is the type of the employee so just I added a, a property to the employee context which is known as employees and this uh, generic type is of employee okay so TL tell you everything is good so now uh, I want to create a table and then after creating the table I want to add some data to the so for adding data, I want to add some methods. So I want to create a new class first. I will call it as employee operations. So and for inserting the data to the table, I want to add a new method. Public void. Insert data. Okay. So, so whatever data that you want to add to the table you have to add to this property employees so for adding to for uh, for adding uh, the data to this employees I want to create object to this employee context and so that I can access this one so let me create a object to employee context it 
Jo. Okay. So if you see, I got the employees properties. So to this, I want to add some data. So here if you see, it is expecting a employee entity. So before this, I want to create a employee object and I want to add some data to that object. So dot employee ID equal to one. to Ajay okay so I just created an employee object and I just added some values to the properties of that uh, employee object so I'm done with creating the employee object so I just want to add so this object to this employees DB set okay so now it is good up to you so if you see uh, to this method void insert data I just created an employee object and for that employee object I added some values and then after I added this object to the employees DB uh, employees DB set that's it and I want to save changes okay and I want to display some message to the console insert operation success like that and just to stay on the console just want to add console dot read line okay that's it so now I'll be I'll be uh, so when I execute this when I execute this project it will automatically create the table in this employee database employee DB database and then it, uh, to the table it will be adding to columns employee ID and employee name and to those columns it will be adding the uh, data like it will be adding one row actually as uh, ID is one and the name is Ajay so let me build and show you what happens exactly okay okay so my build is successfully done and I've run it for once Okay, so before that, I have to call this method in the main method for uh, for calling for uh, making this method to run. I have to call it in the main method. So I'm just creating the object of this employee operation. I'm just calling the insert method, insert data. Let's see. So everything is done now. So I can I'm ready to uh, run this project now. So in the main method, I'm just creating the object of this employee operation. Employee operation. I'm just calling the insert data uh, method of this class. Okay. Let me run, and I will be. So after I run, uh, after I run, I run this project, it will automatically automatically create a new table in this employee database and with the given data. So here you can see insert operation is success. So it says your data is inserted to the database successfully. So if you go to the servo and if you refresh it once and if you go to the tables, so here you can see there is a new table. There are two new tables actually. This is a migration history table. It is in it is for it is actually a different one. There's a, a detailed explanation in my coming sessions over this. So if you see this is another this is the table actually. Uh, and to this table, I have two columns, employee ID and employee name as are given as properties in the custom class. And if you see, this is a primary key. Just by using the key attribute, key data annotation about the property, I can make this possible. And this is just a normal uh, column, employee name. So I just added a 
row to the added one object to the uh, table from the code so let me check whether I got the path or not so here if you see I got the data that I've added from the code so employee ID 1 and the employee name is Ajay so it's it's very simple and clear actually so I've done nothing I just initially added a new employee uh, ID or identity model so which automatically generates uh, employee context for me so to that employee context uh, here in this constructor uh, just add it uh, I have to give the connection string name and in that connection string you will be having all the uh, details of your server so I just uh, you have to just give the connection string name here in this base constructor and then after you have to create a class uh, in, you have to create a custom class and to that class uh, you have to give the properties so this custom class name will be the name of your table and these properties will be the columns of your table and so to this properties for making it as a primary key I just added a, a data annotation known as key and I don't want to allow null values so I use the another data annotation as required and same as uh, I've done same to the employee name also and then after I just added a new property DB set known as employees to the employee context so this is where it will be uh, it will have all the access to the tables and everything I mean this is where uh, we can add the data or we can get the, the, get the data or we can uh, update the data so this is the property where we can do all those things so that's about this employee context.cs then after and the in my program.cs file I just created an insert method and to that insert method I've created a object and I added that object to the employees employees property I mean this is a DB set actually so, and then after I call this in the main method and if you see it automatically created our employees table in the database for me and with the given columns as the properties and also it added a data for me as I've given uh, in the program.cs file so that's it friends this is about the insert operation and the next video I'll be explaining about how you can update uh, update the tables data using code first entity approach thank you friends thank you for watching my video if you like please subscribe to my channel thank you